Welcome back, everyone. It is July 2 of 2015. We're going to continue on with the study of uh, epistemology by Franz Brentano, but we're going to uh, skip to a new resource. We're going to skip to his uh, volume 3 of the uh, empirical standpoint on noetic consciousness. And so it's still going to be epistemology, but we're going to be looking at a new um, primary, re primary resource. And out of the... Uh, Pneumatic Consciousness volume. We're going to take a look at the very first lesson, which is actually a 41-page essay. And we're going to begin with uh, Existential Judgment, the Intuition of the Generalizations. Uh, Brentano says that the self's existence plays a role in the act of perception. The self is always involved. There, the objective presentation is twofold. We have the explicit, distinct presentation and the implicit indistinct. And our perception acquires both primary object and the secondary internal object. The self's collection of evident percepts uh, that we do collectively gather in our mechanical memory does contribute to our motivational base, which does affect and uh, qualify the acquisition of feeling percepts. Now, he gets into a very specific look at the act of presentation and par ergo, which he wants to discuss also in this volume. And it's a good presentation, so we're going to take a look at this in detail. Par ergo equals, uh, he gives a better description here, it's actually our action of internalizing the internal object or the secondary object of presentation. We also sense ourselves uh, as sensing beings in the act of internalization of the secondary object. So a triad emerges of, and he uses uh, Latin and Greek combined, which really made this a very difficult lesson to understand. But uh, he begins with uh, the Latin recto, which is the sensing of the present as the collective whole of the object. And then there's the par ergo Greek term of reflexive knowing, of uh, sensing the self along with the internalization of the secondary internal object of presentation. And then there is a obliquo, back to Latin again, of the acquisition of the internal elements of the presentation. So that's the triad that we end up with. <clears throat> we actually uh, move from the uh, collective whole of presentation and pass through reflexive knowing uh, and the internalization of that secondary object in order to gather up and to acquire the internal elements of presentation, the obliquo. So what is the nature of this internal obliquo that we acquire, this uh, Latin obliquo? It gives us eight aspects. It deals with the relation, relational aspect of the object. It deals with the secondary sense, the internal uh, which he describes as a temporal directional sense. In other words, this object is not a static object. This object is uh, involved in an eschatological trajectory. And it will include, therefore, an expectation of the future. So this internalization is going to become a posited internal objective object. It's going to be a positing. It's going to be an internal objectivity. We're going to take the objective object and do an internal positing and objectivity is going to exist subjectively, but it's going to be the objective, internal objective object. So this posited internal objectivity is situated into its right relational position through our act of psychognosy, which we know psychognosy is cognition at the level of psyche for Brentano, and that will involve our memory, it will involve inference, and it will involve anticipation. Now, he does a better di uh, discussion of proterosis in this uh, essay also. Proterosis uh, is more precisely defined as the stringing together of a series of sensa sensations. In other words, it's actually a stringing together of the trajectory of the object in its temporal sequence in order to understand and better grasp its um, place of relation. So from... a uh, this proterosis, we do extract the 
constants the constant aspect of duration of the object through this trajectory. So we uh, we obtain the constant true internal object. Now our phronetic motivational base always informs perception and it will inform the extraction of this constant internal secondary sense. So we end up with the internal secondary object which is formed as an internal objectivity which uh, becomes the in itself of the object. The in itself of the object becomes an internal dwelling objectivity within us as uh, not a uh, not concept yet but it dwells within us as a generalization and the generalizations are filed away in mechanical memory for additional work when we're going to raise them to signification. So the act of presentation went from recto collectivity to parergo internalization to obliquo of the internal positing which took the temporal directional sense and formed it into a generalization. And I'm going to say that one more time because that summarizes the first part of his essay. Presentation, the act of presentation begins with the Latin recto collectivity to the par ergo Greek internalization of the objectivity in its secondary sense to the obicuo of the actual internal positing which took the temporal directional sense of this uh, secondary sense and formed it into a generalization. So key, key um, further explication of the first moment of presentation from this essay. It's a great expansion of thought on his epistemology. It gives us a better understanding of this first moment of acquiring that in itself of the object. Now analytical judgment, we've discussed it before, but it gives us a few summary comments here. Uh, it will involve perceiving uh, the first analytical moment is to take up the object of presentation as an inward objective mental phenomenon of generalization. So we call up the generalization and then we raise the generalization to its subsumption under a signification. We raise it to signification which is its true image. And then he says we're going to get involved in axiomatic expansion. We're going to take the universal axioms that we acquire progressively. We end up with a collective of axioms of the true and then through uh, analogy and comparison we're going to expand knowing. And then that proterosis of actually uh, determining the eschatological trajectory of the significations coupled with that motivational base that always uh, informs this acquisition we will um, gain even a deeper insight, a, a further expansion of knowledge, which will start to uh, bring to the forefront of our awareness the relation between the significations. We start seeing structure. And once we start seeing structure, and once we have that uh, true image plus the structure, we can put together an assertoric model or a sign model which is a positing of probability, not certainty, but a positing of probability. So the analytical judgment takes up the continuum of the extension of the significations and puts them in a structural whole as a posited sign model of significations that a, this is a posited probability of the true. So that wraps up our, this first essay from the uh, noetic consciousness volume, but I have to say that uh, this was extremely difficult for me. I, I don't have a perfect grasp of Greek, but at least I can work with the Greek uh, fairly well with the all of the resources we have available today. But uh, Brentano started out uh, as a Catholic theologian, and so he learned Latin, and then he transitioned to becoming a, a German Reformed and ended up at Tübingen, and so he uh, then he started uh, really delving into the Greek. But in this essay, he goes from to Greek to Latin to Greek, and it was so difficult to grasp this lesson. But I did uh, had to do a lot of a uh, uh, a lot of additional uh, research to kind of get the definitions that I needed, and I did read some of his notes at the back of the book where he did a little further um, detailed explanation of his use 
of the Latin. But uh, we have here a beautiful expansion of the first moment. That's the key here. He really concentrated on expanding the act of presentation. And uh, and he gave better defini definitions of par ergo, and he gave a better definition of proterosis. And so I thought it was a very valuable essay. And so uh, it was a very difficult project. I do not know Latin, but uh, I was so thankful that I did fight my way through it because it ended up being a great lesson. And that will wrap up this first essay out of the uh, Noetic Consciousness volume, which was the uh, Empirical Standpoint, volume three.